everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I am here to talk you through all of the books that I read in June. It is a dark, rainy, gloomy day and I really want to get to my current reads, so I'm going to whiz through, sort of, the books that I read in this past month. Overall I managed to read eight books this month, which is pretty decent. So I'll start with the physical books first and then end with the audiobooks. So the first physical book that I read was The Intoxicating Mr. Lavelle by Neil Blackmore. This was one that I had really been looking forward to because the premise sounded fantastic. These two brothers are sent off by their parents on their European tour in the 18th century. I don't know if they tell us exactly when in the 1700s, but the younger of the two brothers is becomes caught up in and fascinated by, and indeed falls in love with, Mr. Lavelle, who's another young Englishman who they meet, who is completely irreverent about everyone and everything. This was billed as sort of the talented Mr. Ripley in the 1700s, most of which I love. I haven't fully read or seen The Talented Mr. Ripley, but I thought that that psychological thriller element, that idea of someone not being exactly who you think they are, I thought that would be very exciting. Instead, I found it really gripping, but also highly disturbing. Mr. Lavelle is irreverent to the point of being downright offensive in many cases. I hated seeing the breakdown in relationship between the two brothers. It gets very dark towards the end. There is classism and anti-Semitism throughout. It was very brilliantly done, but it was so much more dark and disturbing than I thought it was going to be. The next physical book I finished was A Restless Truth by Freya Marsk. This is book two in the series that started with A Marvelous Light, which I read in February. So this one follows Robin Bly's sister, Maud, as she is on a ship between New York and London when a murder takes place and she ends up having to join forces with an actress named Violet to try and protect and further the mission that Edwin and Robin started in A Marvelous Light. I can't say more than that because that would give away things for the first book. I enjoyed this one. This one does involve a female-female romance as the last one involved a male-male romance. And I'm looking forward to seeing how these four people's stories will interconnect in book three, which I think think is coming out in November-ish. But overall, this one just didn't have the same spark for me that the first one did. I liked Maud and Violet as characters, but I didn't feel as close to them. I felt like there was a lot going on in a very short period of time, and there wasn't as much exposition about why they were doing what they were doing because it presumes that you remember perfectly clearly from book one. And I don't remember perfectly clearly. But all that being said, it was still a really gripping, very exciting, very well done read, and I really enjoyed it. Next, I finally finished Fashionable Goodness by Brenda Cox. And you can tell by the amount of tabs I put in it that it was well worth the read. This is a nonfiction book that is very straightforward. It chronicles everything that you could possibly want to know about Christianity in Jane Austen's England. Everything from how churches worked to the various roles that various types of clergy might have. How are the various views and theological points reflected in Austen's work and in her characters? And it was slow going through because there was so much information to sift through, but if this is something that you're interested in, it is well worth the read. And I will be using this hopefully for future videos myself as well. 
The next book I finished was The Skin I'm In by Sharon G. Flake, which is my coworker Veronica's and she lent it to me three years ago and I figured it's about time to finally read it and return it to her. But this is a wonderful book. It won many awards and rightfully so. From the perspective of Malika, who's in seventh or eighth grade, I think. So she's about 13-ish, maybe 12. And she is constantly taunted and made to feel lesser than in school for a variety of reasons, one of them being the fact that she is so dark skinned. However, they get a new English teacher this year and she is a woman who not only did not start out in education, but also has a skin condition which has a name for it and I can't remember what it is, but it's where the melanin production of her skin isn't even. So she ends up with very light patches and very dark patches. And the back advertises it as, well, if Miss Saunders can love the skin that she's in, can I do the same for mine? Which already is a fascinating exploration of colorism. But that's not entirely what this book is about. This book is about so much more than that. To me, it explores bullying and peer pressure in a totally non-judgmental and non-preachy way. You understand precisely why Malika sticks with these friends who are treating her so badly. And not only does it explore what's going on in her own home life, but it also lets you in on these fake friends' lives and why they act the way they do, what's going on at home for them that is making them feel like they need to treat Malika this way. And it's about the power of writing and trying to make a difference and trying to do the right thing, but acknowledging that that is so hard and everything in this book still hits home so well, even though it was published many, many years ago. And I really highly recommend it. I'm so glad that she lent it to me. And finally, the last physical book that I read was Summer by Edith Wharton. This is one that I had never heard of, but I came to realize recently that it is one of her lesser known works. And I think the Penguin Clothbounds just republished this. But this is a coming-of-age story about Charity, who is a young woman who comes from a very rural, very poor group of people called the Mountainers. They're you know, the people from the mountain, and people in this town don't associate with those people at all. But she was adopted by a lawyer in the town, and she's been raised by him ever since. And she is fiercely independent, always trying to prove herself over the fact that she is from the mountain. But then a new, highly educated, very handsome young man comes to town, and it's about her falling in love with him, her sexual awakening, and all of the fallout from that. Edith Wharton's writing is always beautiful. I was surprised by how frank this book was without being explicit and the fact that it included not just a reference to but multiple visits to a doctor who performs abortions. I did not think that she would be able to get away with that in 1917 when this was published. Even though I still don't know what to make of the ending. I loved reading it, and it's made me really inspired to read more of Edith Wharton's work in the future. Next up are the audiobooks, and I finished three audiobooks this month. The first one was, yes, I finally finished listening to The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I wasn't really sure about this one at first because it was very slow going at the beginning. However, once I hit about the third third of the way through, it started picking up pace. It started catching my interest more. And that just continued all the way through the rest of the book. 
I loved the way that it touched on a lot of details that I didn't expect it to, because all I had heard it advertised as was a retelling of Passing by Nella Larson. But it's so much more than that. It was exploring life in the suburbs, life for girls, especially girls of color, at college. It explores life for trans people in that period. And then the intersection of all of those was just so wonderful. Again, I'm not sure what to make of the ending. It was a little bit disappointing for me, but I loved all of the topics that it touched on in the middle. And I can't tell you more than that without spoiling it, but if you're curious, give it a read yourself and then let me know what you think. Next, for Ruby Granger's book club on Fable, I ended up listening to Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. This was our group read for June, and indeed it was made even better by the fact that my library had an audiobook read by Hugh Laurie. And I think that made it that much more enjoyable for me. I listened to it straight through in one day because it is very short. It was only two and a half hours. And I have to admit, I did fall asleep for the last little bit of it because I was homesick that day. So I did end up taking a nap for the last 20 minutes of it. But it was lighthearted and silly enough to boost my spirits a little bit. There isn't really much of a plot. It is really just about three young men from Cambridge, I think, who rent a boat, a sailboat, and decide to go sailing in it down this river. And they have no idea what they're doing, and so they get into all kinds of messes along the way. And a story like that needed to be read by Hugh Laurie, because the narrator does have that same Bertie Wooster-esque outlook on life. So that just made it perfect. If it hadn't been for him narrating, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot less. But if you're thinking about exploring it, I know it's often recommended for Victober. Maybe see if you can also find that version, and that could be a good choice for you. And lastly, I listened to the first in a new historical fiction mystery series, which was called Oscar Wilde and the Death of No Importance, written by Giles Brandreth. And this is such a cool series. I really like Giles Brandreth as a writer and as a presenter. I think he's a really interesting person. And so I was really intrigued to check out this series. And what he does with it is very, very cool. So it centers Oscar Wilde, who in this one comes across the body of a male prostitute in an abandoned building where he was supposed to meet him. And because the police seem reluctant to solve it, Oscar Wilde sets about trying to solve this murder himself. But what's so brilliant about it is how much it intersects with Sherlock Holmes. And I didn't know how much I needed an Oscar Wilde Sherlock Holmes crossover until I listened to this book. It's not in a fictional sense. Holmes doesn't actually turn up. But Arthur Conan Doyle does turn up and ends up helping bridge the gap between Oscar Wilde and Scotland Yard and putting his forensic knowledge to use to try and solve Billy Wilde's murder. In addition, Oscar Wilde becomes a very Holmesian figure himself in the observations that he is able to make and the wild deductions that he makes, which turn out to be correct. Plus, this is all being filtered and written down by a friend of his many years later, who, of course, becomes sort of the Watson-type character to Oscar Wilde's Holmes character. And yet they are discussing things like the writing of The Picture of Dorian Gray and the Sherlock Holmes stories and their families are involved. And it is everything. It is so wonderfully done. I would highly recommend at least this first book. And I'm very much looking forward to checking out the rest of the series because there are a couple more after this. I did start one more 
which was Mad About Shakespeare by Jonathan Bait, and this could be on its way to being one of my five star reads. This explores Jonathan Bait's relationship with mainly Shakespeare, but also other great poets, great authors, and how they influenced various stages and various relationships in his life. Sometimes looking at how those intersect with mental health, sometimes looking at how they intersect with general psychology of the age in which he's in. But a lot of it is also supposed to spark love and joy for it to try and inspire students and educators to bring Shakespeare and these other great poets back into the classroom alongside all of the works that they are currently studying as well. I don't think he's saying one over the other, I think he's saying include both, make it balanced. I'm only a third of the way through at the moment, but I am absolutely loving it, and I hope to make a major dent in it, maybe even finish it, later today as well. So that is my reading update for the month of June. Let me know down below what you have been able to read. If you read anything fantastic that you think I might love, let me know down below. And until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.